Okay, inbox video. We've been so busy lately. I'm gonna move this mic a little bit so you can hear me speaking directly into it. Oh, you hear that that noise? Yeah, I've got lots of questions. Okay, someone sent me an email and said it's like in the middle of the night right now. In case you're wondering, and we've been working on the new website a lot. And uh, yeah, somebody sent me an email uh, from London. As a matter of fact, I get a lot of emails from London. You guys are awesome over there. I'm gonna come over there, and you and I are gonna have uh, pints upon pints upon pints. Samuel Smith, Charlotte B, Oatmeal Stout, maybe. Some wonderful bitter beers. Anyway, <laughs> no idea where I'm going with this. Um, so someone wrote me and said, Hey, man, uh, awesome. The new web new website looks amazing. I can't wait. I hope it's not taking too much time out of your, uh, you know, content creation. Yeah, it's taking all my time. But I'm going to create some content for you guys right now. So let's, let's read the emails. First email is from Eric. And he said... Just want to know if you want to be like a buddy of mine so we can go hang out in the Northern California, pick up chicks, a snowboard. It's totally cool if you don't want to, but I can... It threw me off because he spelled cool with a K and my brain doesn't allow such things because I'm not a rap artist. <laughs> no grill. <laughs> brain routine, load, alternate pronunciation. Yeah. Load. <laughs> okay, it's, it's totally cool if you don't want, uh, don't want to, but I can't seem to find any happy people that are like me, except you seem funny, so we most likely laugh a lot. Lol. Anyway, let me know, Eric. Okay. I don't know, bro. Chill, Northern California. There's trees out there. I'm not very good at snowboarding. I can uh, snow. I, can, I, I like to go up. The, I'm more of a mountain climber. I, I'm always like, I like to go up the mountain, not down the mountain. But once you get up to the top of the mountain, what do you do? Oh, you snowboard off. Picking up chicks. I already got one. Never like picking them up anyway. They usually swing and flail when you pick them up. Especially when you try to put them in your mouth. You pick up whole... No, they get really upset. It's it's weird. I never understood that about women. Now you guys get so upset when I come pick you up and try to eat you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're getting the, the, the light questions out of the way right now. Next one is from Urinator or Urinate Zero R. Are you going to do tech updates? I love those. Why don't you ride a motorcycle? Name an album, an album I should listen to. Okay, I'm not going to do tech updates. I don't do that anymore. No. Um, why don't you ride a motorcycle? My father used to dress up as a clown and perform for kids. He'd drive miles and miles on his motorcycle. And one day, some ruffians got together and they decided they didn't like clowns on motorcycles. And they killed him with a pipe. Uh, name an album I should listen to. If you like heavy metal, sir, listen to Klebotamon's Merker. Yes. Klebotamon. Let's figure it out. I'm not even going to tell you how to spell it. Klebotamon was the it's, the... it's the troll who stands out. He's like the one who stands guard and looks for ships. That's the Klebotamon. Good day, Logan. I wish to buy an antivirus, but I'm a bit lost. Uh, with choice, which antivirus is the best? Given price is not an issue... Thanks for your time, Muhammad. Muhammad? Um, I usually use a, a Nod32. I used that for years and years. Wendell, you said you, you like that one as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a pretty good, it's pretty solid. It's lightweight. It doesn't get in the way. So, uh, not yet. That, I love that about Nod32. It really, really does a really good job and doesn't get in the way. However, this year I switched over to PC Cillin. Um, I'm loving PC Cillin. It does, it's very similar in the fact that it stays out of the way. It's actually a little bit heavier uh, than Nod32, but... Uh, the one thing I like a, like better about PC Cylinder is it has a great web suite. Whenever I'm browsing something and, uh, you know, there's a, a virus on a website, I'll, I'll get something beyond. Normally, Google will give you, like, you know, D don't go to this website. There's malware or something like that. Sometimes on sites that, you know, Google doesn't even catch, you know, uh, PC Cylinder will catch it and throw something up on the screen saying, like, hey, PC Cylinder has blocked this website. Are you sure you want to do this? That's what happens when you search for midget stuff in the middle of the night. You get lots of PC Cylinder warnings. You sure you want to see a midget with a glass bottle and 17 women with horns growing out of their ears? Yeah, I want to see that. Oh, there's a virus. I don't care. Don't do that. <laughs> that's how you That's how you get viruses. Also, you want to make sure that you're protected as far as malware goes. Um, the PC Cylinder does a pretty good job. Uh, get something else, you know, like... Uh, uh, what just went open source? My, my brain. Um, um, the root kit thing. Uh, oh, uh, the uh, the uh, root... Uh, not... Uh, not um... <laughs> I've forgotten as well. Uh, hijack This. Hijack This just went open source, which is really cool, which means that tons of updates are going to be available all the time. That does a very good job getting rid of uh, rootkits. 
So if you want to give your PC a uh, rootkit, root canal, I have no idea. I'm just trying to say something. Yeah, interesting. The, the, the magic trick with uh, with uh, hijack this is that it, you can find settings that have been changed that normally will never change, and so you can. It's a little like you have to be a little bit of a power user to make sense of that, so that you know if something's been legitimately changed. But right. it's really not. It's a really nice tool for showing you all the stuff that has been changed. Yeah, so I definitely recommend checking that out. And then also, you know, you want to make sure you have like malware bytes or something like that. Just run it every now and then because there's so much spyware out there. It's ridiculous. Actually, next comment is from Steven. Ah! I love you. You are amazing in all caps. Steven. Someone actually took the time out of their day to sit down and write ah! all the way across the screen. I would be more impressed if there were some way to tell that the keys were not repeated automatically like if there's some indicator on the character to indicate that somebody had actually pressed they, a that many times yeah he didn't just hold it down yeah yeah i wonder if it's late i don't think our viewers are lazy though i think our viewers are the type who are like ready to take on the world they get up in the morning and have coffee and type oh with the a key several times like well he could have had a seizure and then woke up a few minutes later <laughs> You're suggesting that this wonderful email that I've based my life on for the last several days has been a, it was nothing more than a seizure. Well, uh, yeah. You know what? I'm all for epilepsy in that case. <laughs> if it can make me that happy. <clears throat> Next question from Carwin. Hey, Logan, I've been wanting to build a home server for a little while now, but I've been stuck on a case of all things. Ideally, I would like a smaller case to save space, but would also like a case with good airflow, uh, the possibility of water going uh, later down the line. Have you got any suggestions? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different cases out there. It depends on how big you want to go. And, you know, like you can get something from uh, Super Micro that's really tiny that'll basically fit in a rack. Those are nice. It might be pretty difficult to get water cooling in there. So I'm going to kind of rule a lot of the rack mount options out. Now, um, there's a few Micro uh, micro ATX cases, also some ITX cases from uh, Fractal that I really like. And also look at the ones from Lee and Lee. So look at those two companies. Uh, just go to their websites, Lee and Lee and Fractal, and take a look at both of their um, small form factor cases. You're going to like a lot of them. And uh, I think the Lee and Lee's are a little bit more modular. The Fractal's may be a little sleeker. They're both going to be great choices. So take a look at those and thank me later. You agree with that? Yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree with that. There's some really, really, <coughs> I mean, the tiny uh, Fractal cases end up being cavernous on the inside. So yeah, they do. They're weird. Yeah, I don't know how they do that. It's bigger on the inside. Well, thanks, Carwin. Good question. Okay, um, this next question is from Chris, but with a K. Hi, Logan. I'm glad you're making videos again. So am I. I'm glad you're watching my videos again. I was wondering if there's an SSD you would suggest that has solid firmware initially, so I don't have to update it. I'm thinking about the Samsung 830 line. <clears throat> you know, Samsung, Samsung 830, those are decent SSDs. Um, however, like Wendell was saying earlier, if you... Um, if, if the reason you don't want to update the SSD is just because, you know, you don't want to have to deal with it and you're lazy, get over it because a lot of these things will run much better once you update the firmware. Uh, and, you know, there's really hard to guarantee that there's not going to be a better firmware that comes out tomorrow. Um, now, the uh, the Max IOPS from uh, OCZ said you, those those have been running great without an update. Windows yeah. running a ton of SSDs here in his office. Yeah, we so. have we have we really like the Max IOPS. The, I'm I'm a little worried about like the one year failure rate on those. But yeah, if you if the question was more like you don't want to update the firmware because you need something that's super reliable, then you ought to be looking at enterprise grade SSDs, which are usually labeled single level cell. And those are very expensive. Yes, like, they're much more expensive. They're much more expensive. Um, I mean, you're going to get the the lifespan of those is, is ridiculous, basically, like a gazillion, you know, uh, rewrites. But yeah, the Intel options are not bad either. So yeah, the Intel options might be middle of the road, but it remains to be seen because the SSDs are a relatively new technology. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I guess the bottom line here is just just update the firmware. Just deal with it, dude. Don't be a pansy. Update firmware. Or get a, you know, or get a single level cell. All right, next question is from Tarmo. He's from uh, somewhere that, um, he says, I'm going to, I think you're from England or the UK. So should I do, um, I mean, England or the UK. I'm from uh, the, the UK. He's from somewhere in the UK, like Ireland or, or England or Scotland. What, what should I do here? Some incredibly helpful person on the internet made a diagram that explained, you know, Wales, Great Britain, yeah. Ireland. And that was really helpful. Should I, should I do Ireland for this? I'm going to pretend he's from Ireland or... Right. Or should I do uh, Britain? I, uh, I don't know. Are you going for comedic value? Because it's probably Irish. 
Irish. I don't do an Irish accent very well, but I'll try it and see what I can do for you. All stuff, but I still like giant smiley face. What do you think of the GTX 480s? When I got my Asus GTX 480, it was bloody cheap. So I have to take it. <laughs> Big smiley face again. Something like 195 euro. But three weeks later, it was 385 euro. Ho ho ho! I added the ho 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 in there because that's what you do when you're doing theater. You add, you add stupid things that don't make sense. And it has like 1.5 gigabyte of GDDR5, etc. It can run Battlefield 3 at Ultra OFC with good CPU. <laughs> I can't even keep this up. Um, when it first came out, I was like, face palm, 429 euros, price at launch, hot as hell noise, <laughs> but it's not that bad. GPU and can, I can't do it. <laughs> Just cracking myself up. Anyway, what do I think of the GTX 480? Yeah, the GTX 480 is pretty cool. Um, especially right now, because if you can still find one, I don't think you can find one. We're just having a conversation right now. It's like a conversation over a pint. We should have pints with Logan. New idea for a segment, and I can drink. <laughs> well, I have no idea. I get off on tangents. Anyway, uh, yes, he says here at the bottom, maybe a pointless discussion. <laughs> yeah, let's have a pointless discussion about a, a card that's hard to find. If you guys can find a GTX 480, it's faster than a 560. It's faster than a 560 Ti, and it's faster than a 570 in... A, a lot of cases not all the cases but it's not as cool as a 570 it's not as uh, power efficient but you've got a, if you've got a large power supply and you just want something that's really fast it's a great way to go like he said right here he's still playing Battlefield 3 at Ultra which is nice the other thing that's nice about the uh, 480 it's better at anti-aliasing than the 560 and the 570 like 15% better 20% better than like a 560 15% better than a 570. So if you want to run some filters, it's a great way to go. And right now is a really good time to grab one of those because they're they're cheap. They're and if you can find one online anywhere, they're really really hard to find. Then again, the six series cards are going to be out really soon from Nvidia, and that's going to make the five series cards go down in price. So wait and get a 570 maybe. I don't know. If you can find like a 480 for 100 bucks, grab it. Question from Michael Hall. Hey man, love your videos. About time someone on here knows what they're talking about. I'm going to read it like that because he writes it like that. Anyway, saw an article on your website about uh, the new ASRock Game Blaster sound card. And it brought up an interesting question I've been thinking about for ages. Are sound cards needed when running optic out to a receiver? I posted my uh, comment pretty much uh, what I think uh, about the role of sound cards. And I was just wondering... Uh, what you think about all this? I understand their uh, need. They're needed when uh, running PC speakers, but do they fit into the audio file area? Um, well, that's kind of strange. Of course, they fit in the audio file area. That's like why you get one. Let me tell you what's better about um, using a dedicated sound card, sound card versus on board sound card. Now, when you're using a dedicated sound card, a lot of times you're going to get 24 bit as opposed to like 16 bit or something like that with the on board. The signal to noise ratio is also much better. And you can, if you're an audiophile, I hear it immediately, especially when you have a good, good set of headphones. Do I have my headphones? No, they're at home. Um, when you have a really good set of headphones, like some studio quality headphones or just, you know, a good set of, I don't know, Steel Series or Razer headphones or something like that, you can hear a difference. And a lot of it's based on the user. You know, some people really can't hear a difference because they're, I don't know, they, they're, not, they're not very discerning when it comes to audio. Um, the other thing, most onboard is like, um, you, you know, like 96 kilohertz. That, that's what you're going to get. And uh, then when you go up up to dedicated, you're going to get like 192 kilohertz. So it, it numbers higher. It means it's better, bro. Because I know what I'm talking about. I'm on the internet. I know what I'm talking about. 192 is bigger than 96. What's up? I always throw papers. Oh, that one was, oh, that was cool. Inbox at race the world com. New website coming soon, uh, and I'm going to uh, do this now.